right, let's have some order. The House is in session. You're all welcome to the first in our series of debates at the SMC Speech and Debate Society. I think we should uh, all give ourselves a big round of applause to start with. I want to thank you all for coming um, to witness this special occasion today. Now, this is the first in the series of debates that we'll be having. We've sent out a series of emails to share with us what the vision behind the SMC Speech and Debating Society is and what we want to do, what we want to achieve over the next few months uh, with the society. And of course, today we're looking at a topic that affects us all, not only as individuals, but also as a nation. And um, that topic is China's increasing economic influence in Nigeria is beneficial to Nigeria, argue for or against. Now we have two broad teams that have joined us uh, today, arguing for and against the motion. And um, I'm going to be introducing them in a few minutes. But before that, I want to recognize the presence of two of our distinguished faculty that are here. Let's give them a round of applause first. First, I want to um, recognize the presence of Dr. James Sayo. Let's give him a big hand. And also Professor Emevo Biakolo as well, who's joining us. Thank you so much for taking out the time to join us. And then, uh, without further ado, we're going to be introducing um, our speakers and our teams for today. For the liberal team, we have Mr. Dave Barrow Thomas. Can you just stand up for recognition? We have Rita Amobude. Let's give her a big hand. Now, Dave is the lead speaker for the Liberal team for today, and Rita is the supporting speaker. And we also have Olayemi Olasoga, who's um, the researcher who's, who, put all their, um, who puts all their research together. Now, for the Conservative team, we have Omena Abenabe, who's the... <laughs> who's the lead speaker. And then we have Chioma Ewereje, who's the <laughs> supporting speaker. And finally, we have Joke Adele, <laughs> who's a researcher. Incidentally, we also have another researcher joining, who joined the team, but is not um, here at the moment. His name is Don Okpako. Let's give him a big hand. He's <laughs> a member of PT3. Okay, so without further ado, um, one of our judges, Dr. James Sire, we're going to be, he's going to be reading out the rules for today's debates to us before we start. All right, there are, um, there are seven rules here, actually. And um, the first says each lead speaker has a total of 180 seconds. That's three minutes for their opening argument. The second, each supporting speaker has a total of 120 seconds. That's uh, two minutes. Number three, rebuttals will be one minute each. Four, a team cannot revise its position on an item in a debate. Five, whoever asserts something must prove it. Facts presented during the debate must be accurate. Six, non-speaking Participants should not distract the judges or the speakers. So if you do that, I'm going to apply some sanctions. Seven, no new argument can be introduced during the rebuttal period. So these are the seven rules, and I hope they are clear. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Sire, for that. Okay, so without further ado, we're going to be um, launching the debates immediately. And we'll be introducing the lead speaker proposing the motion that China's increasing economic influence in Nigeria is beneficial to Nigeria. Let's welcome Mr. Dave Barrow Thomas with a big hand. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. I count this a great privilege to engage in such a um, <clears throat> intellectual uh, discourse and I believe that at the end of this discussion you will agree with me that China has a lot of um, opportunities for the Nigerian economy. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take this um, right. China, the second largest economy in the world after the US. How many of us are aware of this? How many of us are aware that the word is out that in the next couple of um, decades, China is going to become the largest economy in the world? How many of us are aware of these telling facts? China has its investment influence. China has its economic prowess all over the continents, all over the regions of the globe. Can we ignore such an economy? I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, we need to understand that China has interest in all key sectors of the economy of Nigeria, from the oil and gas, to manufacturing, to telecom, to power, to agriculture, you name it. This is one country that we cannot afford to ignore. Like one economic expert said recently that there is no country in the world that should ignore China. Then the question I want to ask you, how can we ignore a market of 1.3 billion people? How can we afford to ignore such an economy? Now you might wonder, where am I going with such an argument? 1.3 billion markets. What am I talking about? An enormous possibility. Every bilateral relationship, you will agree with me, has its advantages and disadvantages. And of course, this argument here should transcend beyond sentiments and emotions. You need to understand that, yes, it's true, to a large extent, political changes in China has been very slow, but economic liberalization has been very, very enormous in the last two decades. So what are we talking about? Advantages? Yes, the Nigerian economy stands a great deal to benefit from the influence of the Chinese um, economy. How prepared are we? It is only when we are prepared that we can actually key into this enormous potential that the Chinese economy is going to have on Nigeria. Then my question is at this point, will Will Nigeria be worse off in our relationship with the Chinese government? Or will, better put, for clarity's sake, will the increasing economic influence, will China increasing economic influence in Nigeria be beneficial to us? Ladies and gentlemen, quickly, let me give you seven points. Let me give you seven points before I take my seat. Number one, one of the areas we can benefit in this relationship, one of the areas our economy will benefit is through foreign direct investment that will come into the country. You must know right now that the Chinese um, government has invested over 3.5 billion in Africa in the past sector. And the truth of the matter is Nigeria is one of the economy out of three countries in Africa. Nigeria is one of the country that is benefiting from these logis. And you must know that this power investment will bring about 2,600 megawatts. Well, we'll continue this discussion later. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, the lead speaker for the Liberal team. Let's now welcome the lead speaker for the Conservative team, Mr. Mena Abenadu. My co-debaters, 
the judges and the audience. Good evening to you all. I'm here to oppose the motion from the conservative team that China's increasing economic influence in Nigeria is good for Nigeria. Please note the active phrase there, increasing economic influence. Nigeria has a history of bilateral relations with, every, uh, with other countries, both in Africa and other parts of the globe. So we are not here arguing and we are not saying that we shouldn't have bilateral relations with China. Our point is that the increasing economic influence is not good for Nigeria. And why is that? Because China has a record of absolute disregard for standard, absolute disregard for child rights, absolute disregard for labor laws and they undermine the, the, man, the manufacturing sector of Nigeria. On the aspect of standard, Today we have a word in Nigeria known as chinko or shinko. That's to talk about the fake products um, China makes, and this is in the public domain. They take a product, they copy it, and they send back to you. With that, they stifle creativity and they stifle originality. China's, um, China also has a record of absolute disregard for child rights, and this we see in the record of the Foxconn case and also the Samsung case. They use children as low as 14 years old, children who could be our children, children who could be our brothers and sisters, to manufacture goods, products for the rest of the world to use, just because they want to lower cost of production. There's got to be something in our humanity that stands against such abuse. And that is why we think that China's presence, increasing economic presence in Nigeria, is not good enough. Absolute disregard for labor laws. It's also there in the public domain that Workers are made to work longer hours than necessary. They have no regard for the welfare of workers. And the Nigerian people, we have dignity. There is dignity of humanity which must be preserved through labor laws. This China has absolute disregard for. Undermining the Nigerian manufacturing sector, I'll take just one example. The, the textile sec sector, the nation has it in the news. 1, 150,000 jobs lost to the Chinese. Why is that? A simple case. A direct which is not just an African thing, but a Nigerian thing. So the Chinese takes the pattern, goes back to his country, prints it, and sends back to you. What it does is to crash creativity, crash everything, and leave you to buy what? Leaves you to buy fake products, leaves you to buy something that looks like yours but is not yours. We are an original country. Nigeria is a country of great people. We, we cannot take imi imitation as real goods, and we will not accept it. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, the lead speaker for the conservative team. We will now invite the supporting speaker for the liberals, Rita Amobude. Let's give her a big hand. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, distinguished members of the faculty. My name is Rita Amobude, and I'm here to support the motion that China's increasing economic influence in Nigeria is beneficial to Nigeria. Our debate here is not about whether China is the best or whether they have invested the most. But the fact still remains that their consistent influence, economic influence in this nation, in this country, Nigeria, is definitely beneficial. My opponent said that should we allow fake goods into the country just because we want to con consistently engage in bilateral trade with China. I would like to, to state this as a matter of fact that China produces most of the world's goods, both in the US, both in Canada, in Australia, and the rest of them. And they make goods, affordable goods, for Nigerians and for people who are unable to afford all of the expensive Louis, Louis Vuitton clothes and all of that. And people now can wear them and can use them. And People can also sell this product and make profit. Are we going to say that because of all of the other challenges that come with bilateral trade, that we put that aside, that we put the profits aside? I'd say no. Christopher Alessi 
and Stephen Hansen of the Council on Foreign Relations states, Chinese investment in Africa has helped spur consistently high economic growth. The International Monetary Fund's October 2011 Regional Economic Outlook for Sub-Saharan Africa estimates growth of 5.3% and 5.8% for 2011 and 2012 respectively. I must state categorically that I must state categorically that China's economic influence in this nation has increased um, employment and also has brought about the transference of knowledge and technology. For example, we've got um, an institute in the University of Lagos that takes care of skill acquisitions and understanding of how Chinese do does business. And this is good for Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you very much to the supporting speaker for the Liberal team. Let's now welcome the supporting speaker for the Conservatives. Thank you. The judges, my fellow debaters, audience, good evening. My name is Choma Ewerichi, and I'm here to speak against the motion that the increasing economic influence of China should not be encouraged. First of all, I'd like to say in the Nigerian context, when the word China or Chinese product is mentioned, you only think of two things, fake and piracy. It goes so bad that even when you have a phone and probably your phone rings out in public and God help you, it's in a library or a very quiet environment. If the music is so loud, people ask you, is that a Chinese phone? Rather than ask you, what is the model of your phone? And they call it the Chinko phone or the Techno. My first speaker, my lead speaker, Omena, was able to tell us some of the areas where China has in so many ways disregarded what we stand for or what we represent here as Nigeria or in Nigeria. I heard the sporting speaker say that China produces goods in Nigeria and for the world. Yes, I agree with you. But what you fail to mention is the fact that the goods that are being sent to the world, as you, say, as you mentioned, the developed world, is definitely not the same as the goods that are being sent down to Nigeria and to the developing countries as well, especially those that are in Africa. It's already in, on record that the goods that are being sent to places like the US or the Europe are of much more higher quality than those that we receive here in Nigeria. Nigeria and this in one way or another affects the manufacturing company which would have to reduce the quality that they put into the products that they make just so that they can beat the price of what the Chinese goods goes out there for in the market. And the relationship we have with China is not exactly a win-win relationship because we've seen a case where according to studies that are out there in the public domain the majority of the product that um, Nigeria imports to China or exports rather to China is our oil. But we see China putting her interest in most of the industries here in Nigeria, from the oil and gas to the manufacturing to agriculture and even to education, with the recent deliberation that's been going on now in Lagos State about the introduction of Mandarin, which is the official language of the Chinese in the Lagos Secondary Schools. That's to tell you that China stands more to gain in Nigeria if they should have an increasing economic um, effect in our country. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. We're going to be going into our closing, uh, closing arguments in a bit, which is the rebuttals. That means the lead speakers for both teams are going to be responding to and trying to counter some of the things and some of the assertions that have been made on their own um, by the opposing team. So I'm now going to welcome again Mr. Dave Barrow Thomas representing the Liberal team. Let's give him a big hand. Like I said earlier on, it is very, very important that we go beyond sentiments and look at this issue critically. Like what my opponent said, that what China brings to this country are usually fake, adulterated, and all sorts of products. But I want you to understand, 
There is what is called the Sino-American um, relationship, which is today regarded as the world's most important bilateral relationship in the 21st century, which means that China has consistently interplay and related with all the major countries in the world. Why are we not having a similar situation where they are importing or where they are exporting um, fake and adulterated products? Then the questions we should ask ourselves is, how ready, because I said it from my earlier statement, how prepared are we to unnest this relationship? How strong is our institutions? How ready are we to really take the pull by the own and bring about the change in our economy. There is a whole lot that we stand to benefit if we open up to the Chinese influence the way it is going. There is no way in the world we can close this relationship or unnecessarily restrain this relationship. We must open it up because we stand a lot to benefit from all sectors of our economy. Thank you very much. And finally, we will have the rebuttal or reply speech from the conservative team. Let's welcome again the lead speaker. I'd like to, like to thank you for the point you made and the question, the last question you asked, why are we not talking about fake products to other parts of the world? It is that way because there is one word called control which they're applying. And that's what we're talking about here because we're talking about the increased influence, which means that it is okay for us to have bilateral relations, but we've got to watch how far it goes. Now you talked about you talked about the 1.3 billion people in China. Nigeria has 1.6 million or 160 million people, sorry. And the whole of Africa, we're over a billion. And we know that we have a common ancestry. We stand by that 160 million. We stand by that one, one, uh, one billion. Ch the um, uh, Can Canadian company today, BlackBerry, also looks up to Nigeria and Africa as an emerging market. And they do so. We are all aware that we are gold for the rest of the world. Therefore, we must set the rules for, for them to come into play. We can't let them set the rules. And that's exactly what we're saying. Everyone, nothing like technology transfer, sorry. Look through economic history. Nobody wants to sell technology to you. That camera, for instance, the, the history of Hollywood shows that film was being used. And the Asians, they knew that Hollywood and the Americans, the British, they would not give them the technology. They went back and they learned to make their own technology. Today, we have digital cameras in use. Therefore, technology transfer never works. And are you going to talk about profit over standard? Profit over standard will lead to death, death ill health. When it makes up standard cables, it comes into your homes. There is a, a snap, fire outbreak, and the next thing, we're all running helter skelter and crying over the loss of life. Sorry, we will not take profits over substandard. Thank you. Let's give another round of applause to the two teams. The two, teams, the two teams have put together some compelling arguments. They have brought forth their points, and I can see Dr. Sayo making some notes on his uh, paper there. <laughs> I, um, I would like to um, crave the indulgence of the Dean of the School of Media and Communications to just say a few words. I know that uh, were there unprepared remarks, so just a few words to us um, regarding what we have done here today. Yes, you can, sir. Let's give him a big hand. I am, as you can see, quite reluctant to say anything because I came here really to be part of the audience. As soon as I got in here, he put a paper before me and um, compelling me thereby to be a judge and I turned that down because he didn't um, ask me to do this before and I wasn't prepared to do it and I came here just to be part of the audience. Because I have my own prejudices, 
and I wanted to keep them to myself and not allow these prejudices to uh, affect the outcome of this process. Now he's asked me to make a speech. I've made my remark, and I think thank you very much. <laughs> Now, usually in, in a debate of this sort, we usually take um, questions from the audience. Um, that's questions to the teams. But because of time, we won't be able to do that here today. But we'd like um, members of the audience to contribute to the debate, especially uh, with regards to maybe points that have not been mentioned. You can argue for or against. Maybe there are some burning issues that you feel were not raised. You have one minute to speak if you want to add to what has been said here today. Thank you. Uh, well, you pushed it on me because I actually came a little behind schedule. I didn't listen to the key speakers when they were talking. This debate is quite interesting. It's a good beginning, I would say. And uh, for China Nigeria relation, it's been quite interesting what we've seen unfolding in the last few years, but I think that Nigeria as a country should take a better advantage of the relationship. We've had similar relationship with Europe in the past, where they came, pushed everything on us, and in the end, we had nothing to show for it. I think that with China, with Japan, Nigeria should begin to take more affirmative stand in terms of what they demand in such relationship. Like the lead speaker did so many. At this point in time, we have the population that we need. We have the kind of people that should be trained to take advantage of such relationship. I think training for us is key. We should train our people. We should not just allow them to come here and dump everything on us. It's, it's not accepted for me. And I think that that's what we stand here to maybe to gain or to push forward as an institution. We should be able to stand as a people and say, if China should come here to bring anything to us, we too should equally give them something. I thank you so much. Thank you very much. Let's just confirm whether our scores are ready. Okay. So in the proposing side, we have the lead speaker having uh, 30. And then the second speaker has uh, 33. Then in the opposing side, the lead speaker has 28. And then the second speaker has 32. <laughs> now when you put that together, you have a piece 60 and 63. 60 is for the proposing side, while 63 is for the opposing side. As a judge, it is my prerogative to announce that the winning side is the opposing side.